Hello and welcome to another episode of The Average EV. Today we're taking a road trip to Pittsburgh to see the Packers defeat the Steelers. Hopefully that's true. Otherwise, there will be some kind of, right this way, caption telling me or telling you that I was wrong. So, but whatever. Anyways, we're taking a road trip up to Pitts Pittsburgh. Only need like one or two charging stops. It's not that far away, um, relatively. So, Let's get on the road and let's get into it. All right, everybody. We stopped at Starbucks. I'm trying to see if I can get it in the shot. No, well, there's the sign. Anyways, here it is. Um, pumpkin cream cold brew for the win. Anyways, uh, <clears throat> got our sustenance. Now we're on our way. Our first stop is going to be in Bedford, Pennsylvania. Um, I've seen some mixed reviews on how that station's been going. So we're going to go there, see what happens, and then uh, hopefully have a good charging session and get on our way to Steel City. <laughs> All right, everybody, we're here at Bedford EA. Just waiting to get a charge. We got a two car queue. We're next in line. Got a Lucid, where is it? There's an EV6, there you go. A Kona and a Nero. So um, we're gonna charge up. Actually, I'm gonna hop in and show you our, our stats for the trip. All right, everybody. So we traveled 129 miles, 2.9 mile per kilowatt hour consumption, two hours and 18 minutes of driving. Uh, and we're at 17%, sorry, there's a little dusty screen. Uh, 33 miles left of range, allegedly. So we're gonna charge up here at about, I don't know, 50, 60, 70%, and then get on our way to Pittsburgh. All right, everybody, we're plugged in, 70%, 140 kilowatts. Our battery is a little cold, so maybe that's affecting it. Um, I don't think so. So maybe a little bit of derating, but nothing that's gonna completely ruin our trip. So I'm gonna go in, grab a water or something like that, and then uh, we'll get back on the road. I only charge it up to maybe 60, 70%. All right, everybody, we're sitting here charging. I checked the car scanner app and uh, the charger's giving the car everything it wanted. So uh, I don't think there's any derating that, that I'm aware of. Like I said, the battery was a little cool. It was about 60 degrees. Um, it needs to be, um, this is so funny, I only know in Celsius, it needs to be about 25 degrees Celsius, which is like, is that like 70 to, I don't know. You can make fun of me down below and then tell me how many degrees uh, Celsius Oh, how many degrees Fahrenheit 25 degrees Celsius is because I, I really forget but anyways the battery's not that warm and that's why it's not charging at the speeds it should be charging at um I think at least for this station so that's cool um we're charging up nicely we only need um we only need 53 but I wanted to charge up a little bit more because usually EV goes in Pennsylvania are a little bit more expensive and that's going to be our next stop um just because it makes our distance a little shorter to go to the EV go instead of going to the um the other uh electrify america near um pittsburgh so i'll catch up with you all once we unplug and we get back on the road all right we're about to wrap up this charge session 80 percent 28 minutes 46 kilowatt hours uh we're still getting 81 kilowatts at um you know 79 80 percent so that's that's great again the peak speed was about 135 um i checked the battery and the, i think the battery was just too cold to get full speeds but 135 is more than enough as you see we were able to get um <clears throat> quite a decent charge we charged up a little bit more here like i said earlier because the price at evgo is gonna be a little bit higher uh and there it is session ended and there are the stats if you if, if you want them but all right so now i'm gonna go ahead get on the road and then get to that Steelers, sorry, Packers game. All right, everybody, we're on our way uh, to Pittsburgh. I want to debrief a few things. Um, first off, I arrived to a queue. Um, most of the cars, as far as like being below 80%, you know, they were below 80%. The only um, minor issue was the EV6, he was charging up above 80%, which again, you know, you're entitled to do that. I don't know where he needs to go or, or why he, believes he needs that much charge but it's not my my place to judge but he probably didn't need a charge as much as he did but that's fine um so that held us up a little bit 
Um, and then the Lucid, they pull, there's a Lucid Air, they pulled in at, actually we had a little video of that earlier of them driving, going by us. Um, they plugged in at 50% and, they prob and they're also going to the Steelers game because the uh, driver was wearing a Kenny Pickett jersey. Anyway, they probably didn't need to charge, but whatever they charged up. Um, so they probably didn't need to be there, but again, they're entitled to do that. And they weren't, you know, doing anything that'd be annoying, like charging to 100%. Because um, I think it said for their charger, it would have taken 50 minutes for them to charge to 100%. And then there was a Kia, a uh, Nero, and uh, a Kona Electric, both charging up. And, you know, they're slower chargers, so it kind of is what it is. So it wasn't too bad of a wait. And then when the EV6 guy went to leave, he was very nice. He came up to me and just let me know that the left charging handle wasn't working. I had to use the right one, I mean, thank you very much. And he left, and um, I was able to go in, plug in, and charge up. Then the Lucid left, and there was an EQS who was also queuing. He pulled in, plugged in, and I, I almost shed a tear because he, was, he, he plugged in around 31%. He only charged up to maybe 60, 65, 70% and then he unplugged and left before us. So I was like, that is great EV um, etiquette. I was really proud of proud of him and, and, and glad to see that there are people out there only charging up to what they need. Um, Cause it is at the end of the day, typically the faster way to travel. So I, anyways, I went to kind of recap that stop there. It really wasn't that bad. The queue wasn't that bad and we're really in no hurry. So like a 10 minute wait was, wasn't a big deal. A 20 minute charging session, which we didn't have to do. But like I've explained, I think it's the third time I've said it now. So sorry for the repetition, but just want to save a little bit of money because when we go to the EV Go, it's going to be a little bit more expensive. All right, let's get back on the road to Pittsburgh. All right, everybody, we made it uh, to the EV Go charger. We're not going to stay here too long because it is 50 cents a kilowatt hour with a 99 cent session fee. Oof. Um, anyways. And again, if you have a membership, it's cheaper, but I, I don't charge on EVgo enough for uh, that to matter. So here's our data for this trip. 97 miles, an hour and a half driving, 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour. Not too bad with all these mountainous roads. Uh, here's our full trip, 227 miles, three mile per kilowatt hour, three hours and 55 minutes of driving. And we arrived around 33% state of charge, just plugged in. We are not gonna stay here too long. Uh, let's see what the charge is. 71 kilowatts. So we'll probably charge up to 53% and then we're gonna get out of this disaster of a charger. Here, let me take everybody outside and show you how, this is kind of a strange layout and I'm parked pretty terrible, but you've got this 100 kilowatt, at least they're labeled properly, 350 Delta split and then another 100 kilowatt. And then we got a bolt on the 350 uh, when there was a 100 available and then another bolt over there. Looks like they're taking a nap. So yeah, kind of strange. Um, and what's funny is we would have had the 350 if we had turned here, but we made a mistake and went down here. So, oh well, charge up just, just enough to get going. Oh, one other cool thing is there's a, there's a Tesla port here. So it's just uh, right there. And that's with this little Chatamo adapter that goes to the Tesla, which is kind of, it's kind of cool actually how that works. All right, everybody, we are back on the road. Uh, we're gonna go into some major traffic here. Uh, going 6.9 miles and set at 14 minutes, so it's actually not too terrible. Uh, but we are gonna have to be patient here on our way to the parking garage, and then we're gonna go head to Acrisure, not Heinz Field, but Acrisure Stadium. All right, here we go. All right, everybody, we've made it to the uh, parking for uh, going to the stadium. Um, we actually found um, some EV charging. It's charge point $1.25 an hour. It's not terrible, um, but we'll plug in here. We'll actually have a full charge and we'll be able to go straight home probably. We might have to stop maybe once just because, but yeah. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead, get out of the car and get to the stadium. All right, everybody, the Packers definitely didn't win. <laughs> oh, God. But uh, it was a good game. It was a good game, at least, so that's good. Anyways, we, um, when we left, left, last left off, we uh, plugged into a charge point, um, a level two charger. We charged up to 96%, so that's pretty good. It was only like seven bucks, so not too bad. We went from 60, 
91% to 96, so about 35% added, which is awesome. Um, it only ended up being like maybe like 25 cents a kilowatt hour, maybe 26 cents a kilowatt hour, so not too bad. Um, now we're gonna head home. It wants us to go all the way to Hagerstown and charge and get there at 4%, but we might just go to Bedford. We know Bedford's gonna work. Um, it's like a decent location. Uh, we'll charge up there and then we'll we'll make our way back home and we can plug in at home uh, and get the charge we need uh, so my wife can drive to work tomorrow. So we're gonna go ahead, get on the road and we'll catch you hopefully at Bedford is the next place we'll be. All right, everybody, we arrived here in Bedford. Um, we've got, where are we at? Uh, 103 miles, we travel two hours. 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour um, consumption. So um, definitely um, not the best consumption, but it's gonna be pretty good uh, going the rest of the way. So, oh yeah, let me show you the long term as well. 338 miles, three mile per kilowatt hour consumption, six hours, and that includes a drive two, and now on our way back from Pittsburgh. All right, everybody, we heard charging up right now. We're at 64%, gonna go about maybe six, six or 10 more percent and then we'll head home up we'll plenty to get home um i want to go over a couple things that happened when we arrived here so it was a full charger um we had to wait about i don't know five to ten minutes um i think 10 minutes uh there was a mercedes benz eqb eqb and um they were waiting and then a 150 opened up and the the owner wanted to wait for a 350 and so I didn't think the EQB charged that fast. I looked up, I think as a max charge, we have 112. So good thing they didn't do that because they would have wasted their time. Uh, so anyways, that, that's why it's important to know what your charge curve is so you don't make a decision like that where you're gonna end up having to, to wait unnecessarily. So anyways, but they made the right choice. They went and plugged in. There is a cat. A cat? There's a cat in that car right now, everybody. Look at that. He's just oh chilling. Oh my God. Uh, anyways, sorry, Um, back to the story. So they plugged in, we waited, and then there was a um, a Mustang Mach-E. Grabber Blue looked great, but they were charging up to 100%. If you know anything about the Mach-E, um, the charging wasn't great. They fixed the curve, now it's better, but still going up to 100% is like pulling teeth and takes forever. Um, eventually they came out and they, they moved the car and then the rest of their family came out. So I'm not sure, like Sheets is, is fine, but like, I don't know how you could spend like that much time in sheets. Yeah, so I don't know what they were doing. Maybe they were just, I don't know, ordering the entire menu and waiting for it to get made or maybe some really elaborate recipe. I, I don't know, I don't know. But anyways, we eventually, we pulled in and um, we plugged in. Uh, just to know, we plugged in around 44% state of charge and we got like, I think it was 80 kilowatts. So just a reminder, if you do drive an ID4, um, when the battery, it was a little cool but not too cool. But when the battery's at a higher state of charge, um, there's gonna be more resistance. So you're not gonna get the expected speed. So at 44, I would expect about 120 kilowatts, maybe 100 kilowatts, and we got 80. So don't freak out if that happens. That's why it's better to charge in a lower state of charge um, because there's less resistance and you're gonna get those um, awesome charge speeds that the ID4 and many other EVs do provide. So. Again, we're gonna charge up here a little bit more and then we're gonna get on our way home. All right, everybody, we've made it back. Um, I'll flip the uh, camera around later so you all can see all the numbers, but we arrived with 19% state of charge to home. Uh, that last leg was 125 miles, three mile per kilowatt hour consumption. And for the full trip we had, let's see, 463 miles total, three mile per kilowatt hour consumption. Not too bad. It was pretty chilly the majority of the ride um, to and from. So uh, yeah, it's not, it's not too bad. Actually what I would expect, I don't remember what my numbers were from the cold range test, but that sounds pretty close actually. So yeah, but anyways, a uh, nice road trip, even though the Packers lost, but whatever. All right, well, thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one. See you later.
Thank you.